we've got uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, Christmas, right? The the world recognizes today as the day that Christ was born, and uh, they want to celebrate it. And praise the Lord, we we celebrate a lot more than just one day a year. So praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> it's amazing as you get older, uh, your uh, you know Christmas presents get a little bit more uh, more fun. I can remember being um, I don't know seven, eight, nine years old. And some of the Christmas gifts I got were uh, socks and underwear. <laughs> it was like, oh, come on. Now, these aren't, you know, well, we probably needed them. So it was an essential. But, uh, you know, these uh, these days, uh, one of the things Kelly got me this year was a, a hatchet, a very cool hatchet so I can chop wood. So as you get older, the, the gifts get a little better. Anyways, praise the Lord. Let's let's go to Genesis chapter two. We're going to start with <clears throat> my throat's a little. Uh, a little thin today because you know kind of what's going around and and it seems like everybody's got a little bit of a crud or a cough or something and and I have uh, the last couple of days I've had a little something as well but praise the Lord haven't had it as bad as Kelly um she seemed to get the brunt of it but praise the Lord we get through we go on we power on and rejoice in the Lord Genesis chapter two and start in verse one <clears throat> this is in the beginning, obviously, and verse two, uh, sorry, verse one of chapter two, thus the heavens and earth were finished and all the host of them. So God has created the heavens and the earth, mankind, the, the fish, the trees, everything. And then verse two, he says, and on the seventh day, God entered his work, which he had made and rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it because in it, he had rested from all his works, which God had created and made. So God had created the world. He out of out of the out of nothing. He spoke. I mean, it's a, an amazing miracle and testimony what God has done. But He created perfection, this earth, so that it would perpetually um, feed itself and su support itself, and it was perfect. And He saw that everything that He had made was made, and it's perfect. And so he's starting out with a clean slate. He makes this perfect masterpiece. And down in verse 15, Genesis chapter 2, still in verse 15. <clears throat> God had made this masterpiece. And in verse 15, he says, uh, And the Lord God took the man whom he created and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Now we're going through this fairly, fairly quickly. Hopefully we've read these scriptures before and kind of understand uh, in the beginning and how God's perfect plan and that's kind of what I want to look at today is the perfect plan that God has had. And he started with this perfect earth and the universe, this perfect man that he created and this perfect garden, which he has. And he's going to make a, uh, uh, a help meet or a wife. And down in, uh, in verse 22, let's go down to uh, verse 22. This is the last scripture in, in Genesis 2. But Genesis 2, verse 22 and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And so we know that God's plan was to start from scratch, make this perfect world, this perfect universe, this perfect garden. He put this perfect man and he saw that man needed a, a help meet. So he made this perfect wife or a woman so that the man and the woman could be together and uh, help each other. And so at this point, we see that God has made and all these things perfectly. And that's kind of the kind of the the aspect I want to look at that God gave. He gave of himself. He gave of his time. He gave his effort. He gave his creation to mankind without expectation. He said, here you go. I've made this this place. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's yours. Live in it. Enjoy it. Just don't eat of that tree. Everything else you can eat of, everything else you can partake of. And 
and and use and recreation and and rest and and joy and peace i'm giving it to you and so god gave without expectation let's go down to john in the new testament john chapter 8 or i should say let's go over to john chapter 8 we'll start in verse 1 Here's a story that we're going to look at here. Verse eight, or sorry, verse one of chapter eight. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. So at this point, Jesus has come on the scene because mankind has blown it. Jesus has come on the scene. God gave his son so that he could teach, and so he could teach mankind how the best way to live is and some of the attributes of God. And so let's continue on in verse um, verse three. Jesus was teaching here. And then in verse three, and the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This, they said, tempting him, that they might have something to accuse Jesus of. But Jesus, knowing their hearts of it, he stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he had heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So you can imagine this picture. Jesus is there and he's been teaching the people and there's been some very powerful teaching and some miracles have been done. And he's come to this one spot on the Mount of Olives. And so the scribes and Pharisees were trying to find a reason to accuse Jesus and to point the finger and say, see, this guy's not all that. And Jesus, so they brought him this woman and they asked him this question. And, and so by the law, they were right. They should have taken this woman out and, and stoned her. They should have taken her out of the, the city. Matter of fact, they should have taken both people, not just the woman, right? Should have taken them both outside the city and stoned them. They didn't need to come to Jesus and ask. They didn't need to get his permission, but they were trying to tempt him. And Jesus, I mean, you can just imagine what was going on in his mind, right? He's sitting down resting after having taught, and he's like, oh, come on, you guys, you're not getting it, right? And so he's doodling in the ground, and I don't know, maybe he was... Maybe he was drawing the, the mansion of, uh, uh, you know, in, in the father's kingdom. And maybe he was writing these guys' names and crossing them out. Or, you know, what was he doing? Who knows? But they were tempting him. They were trying to tempt him. And Jesus saw this as an opportunity. He sees this as an opportunity. In verse 9, let's pick it up there again. So we pick it up. And he's, he's been, you know, doodling on the ground. It says, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. In verse 8. Uh, again, he stooped down and wrote. And in verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. And so without saying a word, Jesus dispersed the crowd. He, he solved this conflict. Because that's what these people wanted. They didn't want they didn't want justice for the law. They wanted a conflict with him. They wanted to accuse him. They wanted to say, see, this man isn't perfect. And Jesus didn't take the bait, right? He just said, look, and just a simple answer. He that is without sin cast the first stone. And so they all left. They realized, man. Well, I'm not going to cast the first stone. And who knows what was going on in their mind, right? Kind of kind of gives you the idea that when the scriptures talk about the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, right? When we quote the word of God, when we quote God's guidance, direction, and in, 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 uh, in words, it cuts deep in people. We don't know what it's doing. We don't know what's going on in their life. But here he is left with no one around but this woman. And in verse 10, let's go and finish up here in verse 10. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, 
Where are those thine accusers? <laughs> Has no man condemned thee? And she said, no, Lord, no man. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And so in a situation where she was pure, she was, she was definitely wrong. She should have been stoned. Jesus showed compassion and love. And he says, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to accuse you. If those are, those accusers of yours have left, I'm not going to condemn you. But he says, look, don't do that again. That's, that's not the right way. That's not the Lord's way. He had compassion and he showed love. And this love that he showed might have been enough for her to say, you know what? I like this guy's teaching. I like this, this going to church with this guy because he's not like the others who are just constantly, you know, hey, every little, oh, you stepped out of line, got to get, you know, oh, you stepped out of line. This guy's real. And it's the true love and compassion of God. And maybe she followed him after that. Who knows? Hopefully that she didn't go and sin again, right? But she <laughs> sinned no more. But it was the love and compassion that Jesus showed. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse 31. Matthew 26, verse 31. This is Jesus now in his, in his ministry, and it's coming to the point where he's going to be crucified and taken. And he, he speaks to his disciples in verse 31, and he then said Jesus unto them, All of you shall be offended because of me tonight. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Now remember, these, these disciples had been walking with him for three and a half years, seeing many miracles, seeing many incredible things happen. And Jesus said, I know you've been dedicated to me, but every single one of you are going to, tonight, you're going to be offended of me. And verse 32, he says, but after I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. <clears throat> and Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. And Jesus Jesus probably shook his head and thought, oh, Peter, Peter. He says, uh, Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto you that this night, the cock, before the cock crows, thou shalt deny me three times. And so just that statement of, Peter, I know your heart's in the right place, and I know you want to follow, and I know you've got that desire, but you don't have my strength. You don't have my spirit yet, and you're going to be offended as well. You are going to be offended in me. Let's go down to verse 74. Same chapter, verse 74. It's uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 74. Then began he, that is Peter, Jesus is being, uh, had been taken. And uh, then began he to curse, that is Peter, and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock Crew, because that was the third time that Peter had denied him knowing Jesus. In verse 75, Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. You can imagine the guilt Peter might have felt. Oh, man, I was with this man. I walked on water. I saw incredible miracles. He gave me strength and power. He gave me God's power. And here I am denying him. Wow. I am a loser, right? You could imagine that was what he, he might have been saying. Let's go over to John chapter 21. The gospel of John chapter 21. <clears throat> verse 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a, a crud hanging in there. <clears throat> Might cut it a little bit short today just to make sure we uh, I don't punish you too much with my creaky voice. Anyways, this is now in, uh, in John uh, chapter 21. And verse 12, Jesus has been crucified now and he's been resurrected from the dead. God raised him up and given him the victory over all things. And uh, the disciples had gone out fishing. And they're on the, the, uh, on the boat. And in verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, which is John, said unto Peter, it is the Lord, because the Lord was on the land. 
And he'd come over and say, hey, guys, what are you doing? And the fishermen were out, you know, with the nets catching fish. And John said, hey, Peter, it's the Lord. Uh, and now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and then cast himself into the sea. The first recorded skinny dipping session. No, 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 he was he was not naked. He still had, you know, obviously. He just took his coat off, jumped in the, and swam to shore. And the other disciples came in a little ship. And so, so Peter, now having had this guilt and carrying around with him for a while, saw Jesus and said, here's my opportunity to make it right. Down in verse 15. They get to the, they get to the shore. So in, in verse 15, so when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said unto him, feed my lambs. And he goes on and said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And he was just showing and proving to, to Peter, Jesus was, that Peter was forgiven. Just because he had denied him, it was all part of the plan. The guilt that Peter felt and, and the, the pain and suffering that he carried, Jesus is showing here forgiveness. Look, Peter, I forgive. I forgive you. I'm not holding it against you. Look, you're part of the crew. You're part of my disciples. You're going to be a key factor in all of this. Let's go over to, or let's say, I should say, let's go back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And uh, one of the verses that probably the world knows, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. <clears throat> and what we have here is, uh, Jesus saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever should not be, uh, should believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the thread that I want to pull out of all of this is that in the beginning, when God created, God gave of himself without expectation. He started off with a clean slate. He made this perfect world, made this perfect garden, and put this perfect man in it and said, here, I'm giving this to you. When the woman who had committed adultery was brought before Jesus, Jesus said, look, love and compassion. Don't do it again. I love you. Don't sin anymore. You're not condemned. When, when Peter denied Christ and and felt the guilt and the sin that he didn't measure up. Jesus came to him and said, look, Peter, I forgive you. There's a bigger plan here. There's a bigger picture here. Look, let's get past it. And Jesus says here, God so loved the world that God gave his own son, gave up his only child to be crucified and whipped and beaten and torn so that we could have life, so that we could have the Holy Spirit so that we can have everlasting life. And as we go back to, just to uh, um, reiterate in verse 3 of John 3, that Jesus was giving the, the plan of salvation to Nicodemus. And in verse 3 of chapter 3, Jesus answered and said, Verily I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in verse 5, uh, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you want to be part of my kingdom, God is saying, if you want to be part of the kingdom, you must be born again. You must be born of water and of the spirit. Again, it comes back to today being Christmas Day, December 25th. Today being a time where the world sort of recognizes Christmas or something about Christ, we can remember each and every day that God gave first. Jesus gave first. They gave love. They gave compassion. They gave forgiveness. They gave and still give even today. And so as we, we remember that Jesus and God had done that for us, it's for our teaching we have freely given or been given 
so let us freely give back. There are many people at uh, at work. They had um, a couple of weeks ago. They had a a drive for um, uh, toys for tots, you know, and that sort of thing. Where where people that are less fortunate maybe don't have winter clothes, maybe don't even have a house to live in. They don't have food every day. Maybe they're rationed to one meal a day. I've even heard that that uh, some of some people for food would go and get ketchup from like uh, like McDonald's, the packs of ketchup that are free, right? They'd go get some packs of ketchup and they mix that with water and that's what their meal is. And so there are a lot of people out there that are less fortunate than us. And so we can give and freely give because we certainly have been blessed by God. And the way that we can truly give is the gospel. We can give the good news and let people know that, look, you don't have to be condemned by this world. This world may try to condemn you, but God forgives. Jesus forgives. Jesus loves. They have compassion, God and Christ. And we, by the Holy Spirit, can do the same. We should have that compassion and love and give. And remember the good things that we have. There's a hymn we sing at times, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Sometimes the world will try to muddy up our vision so we forget some of the blessings. Let's remember the blessings. The blessings are good and many. And so let's rejoice in the Lord. Let's turn and give freely that love and compassion, that good news to the world. We'll leave it there and hand back over to Pastor Mark. Mm -hmm.